Welcome back to Grade 8 Geography, Unit Number 2, Global Inequalities, Economic Development, and Quality of Life. This is Lesson Number 17, How Does Economic Activity Affect People's Lives? Before we begin today's lesson slash video, let's consider the following. Number one. In Canada, who makes the decisions about how people make and spend money? Two, in Canada, how can people make money? And three, in Canada, how do people use their money? When I'm finished speaking, you are going to put the video on pause so that you can jot down your responses to these three questions, which we will be discussing at the start of our next class. So please pause the video now. The most important thing that influences our ability to get what we need and want is economic activity. Economic activity is actions that involve producing, distributing, and buying goods and services. For example, education is an economic activity. You learn skills and develop ideas that will help you get a job later in life. Working part-time going to a movie, and eating out are other examples of economic activity. Increasing wealth in a developing country can be very challenging. However, even a small amount of economic activity can get an economy going. Starting a small business creates jobs and improves the quality of the employees' lives. Businesses in other countries, along with organizations like the World Bank, can lend money to developing countries to help them grow small businesses. The economic system of the country is the structure of its economy, including the ownership of resources and who makes decisions how those resources are used. An economic system also determines who makes decisions about how people make and spend money. Different countries have different economic systems, However, there are four main types of economic systems. In a traditional economy, all economic decisions are based on customs and traditions. Most people are farmers who grow, hunt, or gather just enough to survive. An advantage of this system is that people develop and share their knowledge and skills. A disadvantage is that the quality of life may be lower due to poor nutrition, little health care, and low literacy. In a command economy, all economic decisions are made by the government. The government is usually a dictatorship or monarchy, and the people have little freedom to contribute decisions that affect their country. An advantage is that all citizens have an equal level of wealth. A disadvantage is that the government is very wealthy while well, the people who are not in positions of power have a very low quality of life. This picture is from a very tragic world event which took place 25 years ago. Sorry, over 25 years ago now. It was the Tiananmen Square Massacre in China. And it was a brutal example of how a command economy reacts to citizens against dictatorship. These students, like the one pictured here, were protesting against the communist government in China. And the government's response was to send out the tanks. And this brave young protester held his ground. And unfortunately, things came to a, a very poor ending for him, as well as for others. Even one protester is considered too great a threat to the government and the military is used as a tool to instill fear and keep people quiet. In a market economy, all economic decisions are made by individuals and businesses. The government is expected to not interfere and to provide services that will help the economy grow. An advantage is that business competition creates lower prices for consumers. A disadvantage is that larger businesses make large profits, while employees and smaller businesses earn significantly less money. This is a picture of an American 
stock market. In a market economy, people are free to buy and sell stocks. That's ownership in a company. And they do this by going to a stock market. In a mixed economy, all economic decisions are made by individuals, businesses, and governments working together. The government is expected to make and enforce laws that ensure fairness for everyone and give the people the freedom to choose how they make and spend money. An advantage is that the government can make laws that will protect the environment, citizens, and workers. A disadvantage is that there can be many arguments as workers and businesses complain that the government is giving better treatment to one side. And in most mixed economies, the government provides funding for educational institutions. The reason being that in a mixed economy where everybody is contributing to the decision-making process, you want your population to be well educated so that they can contribute wise uh, ideas or uh, suggestions. Within any economic system, there are four economic sectors. The primary industry is an industry that takes natural resources from the earth, such as forestry. A secondary industry is an industry that turns the natural resources into finished goods. For example, turning lumber into paper. A tertiary industry sells the finished goods as well as services, such as teachers or store managers. A quaternary industry focuses on developing and applying ideas and knowledge, such as software development. So here's an activity for you to try at home. On the next slide, you're going to identify each industry as primary, secondary, tertiary, or quaternary. So I'm done speaking. Put the video on pause and determine whether each is an example of primary, secondary, tertiary, or quaternary. And we will take this up in tomorrow's class. So put the video on pause now. Geographers have found differences between economies that are developed and economies that are developing. The proportion of primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary industries in the country tends to influence its level of economic development. In general, countries that have more employed workers, higher levels of technology, and more tertiary industries have a more developed economy. You can see it from this chart here. Okay. Most uh, high income areas have an abundance of tertiary industries, and a smaller amount of primary and secondary industries. Okay. In a low income region, uh, there are certainly more primary industries and comparatively less tertiary industries. Countries' economies change over time as their governments change, as industries grow and shrink, and as the population becomes more educated. Canada's economy has changed greatly over the last 150 years. When Canada was first created, few people were educated. The economy was based on primary industries, mainly farming, fishing, and forestry. As Canada grew, more people gained a formal education. As a result, new industries that were not based on taking resources from the land were developed. Today, the majority of Canadians work in tertiary industries. Okay, much as you can see in this graph here. 1891 and 2003, the number of primary industries in Canada has declined greatly, while the number of tertiary industries has risen quite noticeably. Oops. 
Okay, let's finish this lesson with one final discussion question. What are some other advantages and disadvantages of A, a traditional economy, B, a command economy, C, a market economy, and D, a mixed economy? So before you close this video, you're going to put on pause so that you can write down your answers to this final question, which of course we will discuss in tomorrow's class. So I'll put the video on pause now. And until tomorrow's class, this concludes today's video.